My name's Keith Rucker. Thought up tonight I'd shoot a little video here and show you guys uh, some how to do some maintenance work on these uh, Starrett uh, dial calipers. So I've I've talked before about how I like dial calipers and how I personally prefer them over the digital calipers. It's a personal preference thing. Nothing against the digital calipers out there. I've actually got a pair now that uh, I got out of one of those toolboxes that I. Uh, purchased recently and I've been using it and, and I have to admit they're nice but still when it comes down to it I just I just like the dial calipers um, but the ones I'm using here these are Starrett model uh, 120A's I've got two of these uh, uh, both of them I picked up used somewhere along the line uh, they weren't new when I bought them uh, but these are good calipers I, I, I highly uh, recommend these to somebody if you're looking for a good pair of calipers these share at 120a's are excellent calipers for dial calipers uh, but if there's a problem with them one of the things I guess I don't really like about this design is is that there's a rack in here there's a rack and pinion basically that as you move this is what causes the, the dial to move and the rack in these stare at calipers is open and because of that as you use them they get dirty can get chips you can get stuff down in there and occasionally when you're moving this thing across that dial that uh, little uh, gear in there will hit a piece of trash or maybe a chip or a uh, piece of metal shaving that gets in that rack and it will cause it to jump the track and when it does your dial will be off by about 25 thousandths for every little click in that that it jumps off at least that's what I've noticed it usually jumps in 25 thousand increments um, so when that happens it's not a big deal uh, to fix it but a lot of people just don't know how to do it so anyway this morning uh, I was actually at the museum I stopped by for just a few minutes I need to take a couple of quick measurements on something uh, so I stopped by there while I was uh, out in town and I grabbed my calipers I went over and measured them and sure enough when I did uh, I felt it as I was pulling it out it hit a piece of trash it jumped the track when it does that guys all you got to do is just take the the, the bezel, bezel on here move it over uh, move your zero over uh, and it will it works fine but if you're like me you want zero to be up it's just one of those little anal things that I have I, I want my zero to be up uh, it's not a big deal if it happens and a lot of times you just take some air and blow that out but anyway when it happened today I said well I'm gonna take those calipers home with me and I'm gonna take them apart clean them real good put them back together and get it back to zero so this afternoon I actually had a conference call at work and I almost hate to admit this but while I was on the conference call I'm sitting at my desk of course I'm mostly listening I'm not really doing a whole lot of talking I ran and I chime in on this conference call but I put the phone on mute which I usually do when I'm on a conference call anyway and I'm sitting over there at my desk taking my calipers apart and cleaning them while I'm listening to this conference call that I'm on and while I'm doing that I'm thinking hey you know this would actually make a pretty cool video I'm sure a lot of guys would like to see how to do this if they don't know how so I've got another pair this is my second pair exact same model um, and I, I keep one pair uh, out at the museum and I keep one pair here at the house so the, the, the pair that I have here at the house, I actually cleaned these not too long ago. These are not in bad shape, but I thought I would just go through the process I'm going to, of taking one apart, cleaning it, putting it back together, and resetting that dial to zero uh, as you take it apart. Uh, because again, I'm sure a lot of other people out there would like to, to, to see this process. So uh, I'm going to get you zoomed in here where you can see this a little bit better in just a minute. But before I do, um, just what do you need to have to do this? It's, it's pretty much not anything special, stuff you can find around the house usually. So when I'm working on these, I like to lay it out on a cloth uh, of some type. I don't like for it to be on a hard surface. And the reason is, is I'm taking little tiny screws out. And if you're working on a desk or you're working on a workbench or a metal piece, you know, metal bench or whatever, you drop those screws, they tend to bounce. If you, if you have a cloth, uh, if you drop those screws they tend to stay put so that, just a, again a preference thing so I just went and pulled out a, a dirty shop rag here an oily shop rag it's not real dirty but you can tell it's, it's got some use to it so anyway I, that was the first thing I came out so I'll, I'll work on this uh, on this cloth um, what you need uh, as far as other supplies is a good set of screwdrivers and these are some uh, Smith & Wesson uh, screwdrivers nothing fancy about them I think they were actually a set of freebies that I got when I ordered something sometime but 
make sure you're using a good set of screwdrivers, guys. Um, you know, these little small screwdrivers, if you look at these little gunsmithing screwdrivers, these are, they're kind of hollow ground, the tips on them, where a lot of times just a regular screwdriver is not made that way. These really fit these small screws very well. So get yourself, if you don't already have a set of these, uh, you know, a good set of small screwdrivers, get you a set. I've actually got a couple of sets of these. Like I so said, these are Smith & Wesson. I'm sure they're probably uh, just whatever brand, you know, it's probably just badge that. I don't think these were actually, you know, they're, they're sold by Smith & Wesson, they're probably not made by them, but they are a good set of screwdrivers. Get yourself a good set of screwdrivers for working with these. Uh, I've got three uh, flat tip sizes in here and then I got three fillet sizes in here. So anyway, that you need a good set of screwdrivers, small screwdrivers for doing these little small screws. Uh, as far as cleaning goes, uh, I use just some rubbing alcohol. Uh, I get some Q-tips where I can get down in there and get in some of these parts and kind of clean it out. And a paper towel and maybe another little cloth rag just to wipe it uh, once you start cleaning it. Again, this set isn't bad. The, the set that I had out at the museum, they had actually gotten kind of gunky down in there. Uh, I, in fact, I really didn't realize that they were as bad as they were until I took them apart and saw how much was in there. Uh, but this pair's not bad, but you'll at least get to see the process. So let's get you zoomed in closer. We'll show you how to take these things apart and we'll show you how to clean them, put them back together and get that dial set back to zero. All right, so should be able to get in here zoomed in pretty tight now. And you can see this is my two pairs. I, this is the pair that I worked on earlier today. Uh, this is the pair we're gonna clean up here. Um, and if you notice one thing on these, the uh, dial isn't on zero on these and it's off by just a couple of uh, thousandths uh, again, no big deal. You can always adjust these. You know, that's off by about, uh, just say three or four thousandths. Probably um, that little bit right there has just got to do with this rack not being in the exact right place. If you'll loosen the screws up on the rack and just take your screwdriver and kind of nudge it um, forward, back, forth, you can, you can usually adjust that out. And uh, this probably just moved a little bit. And, but that little bit is, is, is usually just the little bit of adjustment in the rack will take care of that. Usually when it gets off by a tooth, it's usually off by about 25,000. So it'll usually be up, or, you know, one of these quarter sections when it, when it jumps a tooth. Right now, this one's not bad, but uh, we're, we are gonna go ahead and take it apart and show you how to clean it. So get you a little screwdriver. And the first thing you wanna do is just pop this little plastic piece off the end. Um, and this one here is, is not in as good a shape as the other one, but still you just pop it off. Uh, it just kind of presses in there. It's just some little plastic tabs that go down in there, no big deal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the face here. And to do that, uh, I'm gonna take these little four screws out right here. And you just take your little screwdriver and come in here and take them out. Now, one thing that I will tell you uh, while you're working on this, there's two sets of four screws and uh, there's there's four that hold this the the face down and there's four that hold this rack in place you're going to take all eight of those screws out but at least on this one here i noticed that the screws were a little bit of a different length and the ones that, that hold the face down when you put them in they actually will go through the back here and stick out so make sure you keep those screws separate it's fairly easy to, to, to pick them apart and um, you know, it seems like I remember when I did this one last time, I think these screws on this one may actually be all be the same length. We'll look at that when we get in here. You know, these are the same model calipers, but obviously they were made at different times. And, and uh, um, you know, there may be some slight differences in them. So let's see, one more little screw there. I'm gonna kind of hold that on and tap that screw out. Okay, so now there's my four screws. And now I'm just gonna gently lift this little piece off right here. And uh, if you look on the back, you can see the little gear. And uh, as that gear turns, it's gonna turn the dial on the, on the front of the calipers. That's, and that basically just moves by sliding on this rack back here. So, that's really as far as I'm going to take this apart. Now, if you had a problem, you can take this apart further. There's a little bit more detail in doing it. And usually for just cleaning and uh, getting it set back to zero, 
that's as far as you need to take that apart. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and we'll take off um, the, this piece here that slides. Uh, by taking those screws off, it just pops off the back. There's nothing holding it in place now. But be careful when you do. There's two little strips right up in here. And this is the little thumb screw that tightens it down. And when you tighten that down, it just presses on. So there's a piece of, of spring steel in there, and then there's a little piece of, of a softer fiber type material that protects the, it from marring, that little thumb screw from marring this, the top up here. So when you take those out, there's going to pop out, and the spring steel goes on top, and the little fiber piece goes on the bottom. But uh, we'll just go ahead and actually, I think what we do have to do is pull it all the way off the end, just roll it out because this little roller on the end is going to keep you from doing that. That little roller just comes out, and now it just kind of comes apart. All right, and here are these two little strips. Again, there's this little soft, uh, it's almost plastic-like, and then there's a piece of string, spring steel there uh, as well. All right, we'll just set those right there. So next, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rack. And again, there's just four screws holding these in here. take these screws and put them over here where I can keep them separate and actually I think they are smaller than those not quite as long it's the same same thread and everything but they are a little bit different all right so now I basically got this caliper taken apart as far as I'm going to take it apart uh, for just the cleaning and uh, again this one's not bad uh, I actually did this this not too long ago but you can see there is some trash up in here um, when I took the other one apart today, I mean, it was just full of gunk. This one's really not uh, too bad at all. So, so now comes the cleaning part, and this is fairly simple. I'm just going to take some uh, regular rubbing alcohol, some isopropyl alcohol here, and uh, take a Q-tip, and I'll just kind of come in here and scrub that. And this alcohol does a real good job of just kind of dissolving that gr grease and grime in there. And getting it cleaned out and you can just take a paper towel or a cloth towel probably a cloth towel would be better uh, I've got a paper towel here but I don't, it's not gonna hurt anything we'll just go ahead and clean that out and um, you know you can take a, a minute or two if, if it's greasy and grimy uh, this alcohol does a good job you know go down here and just clean off your numbers uh, you can clean the whole thing uh, anywhere on there while you got it apart you know, just get it cleaned up with the alcohol. Again, this one's not bad. So, and then just wipe it down, clean it up. And uh, again, that, that piece there now is clean. Uh, you know, we'll do the same thing with this rack. This rack is actually in, in pretty darn good shape. Again, uh, this one was not bad, but we're just showing you the process here on this one. Uh, on this rack, I'll take some alcohol and I'll rub it down with the Q-tip or whatever. A lot of times what I'll do those, I'll just take some compressed air, uh, a little air gun on my, on my air compressor, and I'll use that to kind of get all the grime out of that uh, rack in there. It's a very fine rack. You know, we don't want to put anything abrasive on there that might uh, injure it or, or wear it down, uh, but the, the air does a good job. You can just take your Q-tip, come in here, clean it, uh, that will dissolve a lot of that grease, grease and grime and then uh, you know take that air compressor and blow it out so you know with that uh, this piece is now ready to go back in and we'll go ahead and put it back in and uh, after we've got it clean put my little screws back in here and Right now, I'm not trying to tighten this down because uh, we're going to actually need to adjust this rack a little bit when we put it all together. So I'm just kind of snugging them in there and really not putting any, any tightening on them at all right now. 
these little screws can be aggravating they're teeny tiny you almost need a pair of tweezers if you got fat fingers like I do but they're not too bad all right so that is all back together now okay so next uh, give me a fresh q-tip and we're going to clean this part out real good same thing just get in here scrub it with that q-tip you know, I really don't like using anything like a wire brush I mean you could probably take a little brass brush to this if it was really bad but quite honestly usually the uh, the q-tip is all you need uh, that will usually take care of it and that little bit that was in there now we've got it out and, and the alcohol the nice thing about it is is that it will evaporate so very quickly so if you don't get it all wiped out of there it's you're not going to leave a residue on there some solvents you know you clean it up and you actually are leaving some residue in there and that can leave you something for more grease and chips and everything else to to get stuck on so um, i like using the alcohol for this all right, so we're almost ready to put this back in here now. Uh, so you got these, this little spring, and you know it's, it's pretty clean. You can clean that up if you need to. So this spring, um, it's kind of uh, got two bends in it, and it, if you look at it, you can kind of tell right here the mark where the little set screw's been setting. So I'm gonna put it back in just like it came out, and there's a little pin. It's hard, you can't really see it. There's a there's a tiny hole uh, in here. And there's a there's a pin right here that this fits onto. There's a little dimple over here, but this is more of a pin. And there's a, that hole there is going to engage in that pin. Okay. And then you got this little strip here. And again, this is just a protector uh, to go between that clamp and the top of your your calipers here to protect it. And it's going to go right there on that same pin. And We'll just come right down here to the end and start sliding that on the end. And you can make sure as you get down here that those pins are engaged. But before you slide that all the way up on there, be sure and put your little wheel on. If you don't, you got to take this whole thing back apart when you're about to get it back on there. So uh, this little wheel just kind of goes down in there and you just push this back together remember right now though whoops I don't have my uh, my little thing jumped off the pin there so quite honestly this is probably the most aggravating step right here getting it back together and make sure all that see I dropped it and messed it up so let's do it again Okay, that piece is on. This next piece is on there now. We'll slide her in there. All right, now it's on. Now be careful here again because this thing will, it's, there's nothing holding it on top right now. And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and push it all the way up to zero, okay? All right, so next step here is your actual dial piece. And again, I'm not gonna take the crystal off. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're just gonna, again, come in here uh, with a little Q-tip and some alcohol and we'll clean this out this one's not bad at all again I wish I had done this on my other one you could really see a nasty set of calipers and they have been cleaned before uh, they they just get dirty in the in the shop you know this it's not always a clean environment we're working in and uh, you can clean the top of these as well just you know I got a little bit of residue in there it looks like and that alcohol will cut it right off Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, 
using my finger here in that little rack in the back, I'm just going to get it pointed up to zero. Okay, so it's pointed up to zero. And now we come in here and we're going to very carefully drop this down on there. And it may take just a little bit of wiggling to get it on that rack in there just right. Up. A little bit of trial and error here, guys. All right. So now that's back in place, more or less. And we'll go ahead and screw this, this piece back down on here. Put the four screws in. Don't worry that it's off just a little bit right now. We're going to adjust that in a minute. We just want it to be real close to being in the right place. Okay. Alright, so that's back down. And remember I told you uh, on this rack back here, you can get a little bit of adjustment out. So now what I'm going to do is make sure this is just, you know, loose. It shouldn't have been tight before. You kind of have to move it to get to this other screw. We'll take it down to zero. And you see I'm within two thousandths. But now I'm just going to take my little screwdriver here and adjust that rack up until it's pointing straight up and then we'll tighten that rack down and it moved just a little bit let's see if i can get that back out may not be able to Tighten this one up. All right, so and now just loosen your bezel up there and fine adjust it. It's pointing straight up. Now, if you remember before, it was off by a couple of thousandths. Uh, and then we take this little plastic piece and uh, put it back on the end. And that's it, guys. Um, it's fairly simple to do. Uh, a little bit tedious, but uh, as you saw, it didn't take very long to do this, and with a little practice, it goes pretty quickly. And uh, if your caliper gets off or gets gunked up or dirty, it's a fairly easy fix to fix these sterrets. Uh, you know, you can send these back to sterret and have them do that, or you can send Long Isle or Indicator and have them do it, and they'll charge you fifty, sixty dollars for uh, what we just did right here—a cleaning and and uh, you know, getting it set back to zero. Uh, but there's no reason to do that. It's just something you can do at home all by yourself. And, uh, you know, if you're working in a machine shop, this should not be anything challenging for you at all. Uh, just as easy as cake. You know, other brands of calipers are, uh, you know, will be similar to this, but not exactly like this. A lot of calipers are basically designed on the same basic design. And, and while the procedure may be slightly different, you can probably still follow that. Now, I will say I've got some uh, brown and sharp calipers. Actually, I don't have them right now. I, I, I sent those off to get uh, repaired because they had some issues. I uh, sent the Long Island, Long Island indicator. But those are very difficult to take apart. Uh, they're not near as easy to work on as these uh, Sterrets are. Um, I'm sure somebody knows how to take them apart. I, I have not been able to figure out how to get them apart. And uh, I have done a little bit of searching on them. Now, I will say that on those brown and sharp calipers, like the ones I, that I sent off, 
I really like those. Uh, and the main reason is, is because on those, they cover this rack and pinion, so it's very difficult to get trash down in there. Whereas on the Starrett's, that rack and pinion is open, and it's very easy to get a piece of trash in there, and you're zipping this thing along, and it hits that piece of trash, and bump, it knocks it off a tooth. And again, then your dial's off 25 thousandths. If that happens, no big deal, just move it down to zero, and uh, you know, move your, z your dial over to 25 thousandths, yeah, you know, uh, your zero will then be pointing over here when it's at zero. You can still use them, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, but again, it's a fairly easy fix to just take them in here and uh, go through this process to clean them, so. So there you go, nice and easy, no big deal. If you're uh, stare at calipers, uh, get out of alignment, jump a tooth, uh, get knocked off a little bit, get a little bit dirty, it's not a big deal. It's something you can do right there in your own shop. You can do it on the kitchen table, uh, wherever you want to sit down and, and work on these. Uh, they're very easy to work on. They're very easy to fix. These uh, steric calipers, again, are very durable. They hold up well, and when they mess up, they're easy to fix on your own. Again, I love steric tools. They're my favorite. Uh, not all of my tools are Starrett, but man, I, I love Starrett. Starrett has quality stuff, and uh, I highly recommend these 120A um, dial calipers for anybody out there looking for a good pair of calipers. You can pick these up on eBay, uh, fairly cheap. Uh, get a used pair. Uh, a lot of times uh, they'll sell a used pair because they get dirty and grimy and nobody knows how to fix them. Now you know how to fix them. You know the secret. So you can go out there and buy a good bargain pair. So as long as they're not just worn out or have been abused, uh, they're fairly easy to, to fix up. The nice thing about machinist tools is that machinists usually take very good care of their tools. Now, when they get through being, you know, they end up just in someone's toolbox uh, uh, after them, you know, whoever owned them has sold them or passed away or whatever, then sometimes they can get beat up. But uh, usually machinists will take good care of their tools uh, at least that's been my experience buying a lot of used uh, machinist tools over the years. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, another good tip. Hopefully you can take this and, uh, and put it into practice and uh, clean up and get your calipers uh, in tip-top shape. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing.